Hello, and welcome to Community Pulse. Our Community Pulse is a new public affairs show on CAN TV. And while it's slightly embarrassing, we've actually already launched, but this isn't the, the launch show. We do some technical issues. We didn't exactly do our launch, but we planned on it. So even though we have some shows in the hopper already that have actually been aired, this is the show you're gonna find out exactly what Community Pulse is. So Community Pulse is a is a public affairs show and the focus is on health. Public health, medicine, life sciences as it impacts the welfare of Chicagoans. So you're gonna learn about issues, people, organizations who uh, are at the forefront of life sciences, medicine and public health in Chicago and probably even some nationally. Uh, my name is Levi Moore and I work for the Hectone, it's kind of hard to spell, H-E-K-T-O-E-N, <laughs> Institute of Medicine. And Hectone is the sponsor of this program and it also sponsors an organization called the Fox Glove Alliance, which I will get to later in more depth. But uh, I'm the coordinator of the Fox Glove Alliance. And Fox Glove is uh, one of the co-partners in Community Pulse. Uh, I will now go to my other partners <laughs> in Community Pulse and, and who also serve as co-hosts, but believe me, we have a lot of other co-hosts. So, uh, Takora. Hello, my name is Takora Love. I am a registered nurse. Um, I am a humanity art culture enthusiast. And I am an advisory board member of the Hectone Nurses and Humanities. I am also a member of National and Local Academy of Med Surge Nursing. I wanted to talk today about the Hectone, the initiative of the Nurses and Humanities. Nurses and the Humanities was founded in June of 2006 to present programs that demonstrate and increase the awareness of the art. As we know, nursing is an art. According to Florence Nightingale, it is said to be one of the finest arts. The programs that we have demonstrate and encourage the healing power of the arts and humanities for caregivers and their patients. A lot of the programming that we do focus on music, theater, dance, literature, history, philosophy. We have various formats lectures, plays, classes, workshops, and excursions. Later in the show, I'll talk about some upcoming programming that we have. And now I'll turn it over to our other co-host, Megan. Well, hello there. So I am the outlier here. My name is <laughs> Megan Phillip, and I don't work for the Hectone Institute, <laughs> but I love my community partners. Um, they have many initiatives, as you just heard, but I work for a different organization. Uh, I manage a project here locally called HC3, the Healthcare Council of Chicago, which is an initiative that's actually managed by a parent company, uh, similar to the way that Hectone has these lovely operations, uh, called Third Horizon Strategies. So Third Horizon Strategies is a consulting firm with a national presence focused on advancing health across our nation and looking for ways that we can deliver healthcare in a more equitable, and um, fair manner. Um, but our work here through HC3 is focused as a coalition of various members from business to providers and other various healthcare stakeholders across Chicago that are advancing opportunities. So our three pillars as we look at that are addressing health and social disparities, economic development, and system transformation. So the ultimate goal is to drive health equity in Chicago. And so that's why I'm really excited to be a co-host on many programs to come and ones that have passed um, with my colleagues here and that's why we continue to advance an opportunity to collaborate but we are looking to this program to be a vehicle to be able to share with our community so I'm going to share hand it back over to Levi uh, to share a little bit more about some of his work okay uh, th okay um, say a little bit about myself um, I, by trade, I'm a government relations person who has been in public health for about six or seven years. Um, I've lived in Chicago since 1990. I'm a 
East St. Louis, Illinois native, but I am a Bears fan, a Bulls fan. My second favorite team is the White Sox, but I will still be a Cardinal fan for life. So that's the personal stuff out of the way. So um, Hectone, uh, and believe me, relax because this can get a little bit confusing right now. The Hectone Institute of Medicine is actually celebrating its 80th year this year. Mm -hmm. uh, it originally was the research arm for the Cook County uh, Health System. And in the early days of Hectone, it really focused on clinical research and scientific papers. So uh, somewhere in a vault somewhere, there are about 2,700 uh, clinical research mm -hmm. papers that Hectone and its colleagues and cohorts wrote over the years. And it also even uh, conducted their own clinical research. Um, about four years ago, uh, the leaders of Hectone, the Institute of Medicine of Chicago, the Michael Reese Education and Research Foundation, and the um, Portis Foundation uh, got together and decided that they wanted to come up with an organization that uh, could work together um, and to see what they could do as, as a coalition. Well, uh, they handed it off, so there were four at the start, just trying to figure out like what it should be, what how it would work. So, they handed it off to me, and Fox Glove started to evolve. Now, Fox Glove is not an organization. It is a coalition. So imagine those original founders, but now we're up to 15 members and growing. So it includes Healthcare Council of Chicago, Westside United, Center for Innovation, uh, Center for uh, in Innovation, uh, Westside United, Institute, the Illinois Association of Free and Charitable Clinics, the I Am Able Foundation, which has mm -hmm. a show on CAN TV that has its own sponsors too, um, and uh, access to care, uh, and I'm sure I'm forgetting some, but uh, that is essentially who we are, and believe me, it's sort of like be a new member every quarter, uh, and they're all involved in public health as a coalition. So to give it a sense of like what we do, um, right now we're working on four, let me say there, there are four things we're gonna focus on for 2023, 2024. Um, the first one is already kind of done. Um, believe it or not, until two years ago, it was illegal in the state of Illinois to donate unused, mm -hmm. unopened prescription drugs to a free clinic. So what do you do with that? You put it in an incinerator, you throw it in the trash, or you flush it down the toilet and it gets into our water system. Uh, well, due to the work of a number of, well, actually it was Hectone, the Institute of Medicine mm -hmm. of Chicago, and the Illinois Association of Free Clinics, and a host of other organizations that includes the Illinois Medical Society, Illinois Cancer Society, um, the Illinois Farmers Association. We actually got that law passed that people have been trying to pass for a decade. So now that coalition still exists. That's kind of, well, we'll just say that Fox Club coordinates that, meaning it's me, uh, to um, <laughs> continue the development of that pro of that program so that uh, it can be mostly institutions like senior homes, some hospitals that have excess uh, prescription drugs, which believe me, certain heart and some heart medications some uh, can, can be in the thousands Absolutely. per dosage. Sure. And to just to think that, oh, we're just gonna burn this up um, seems insane, mm -hmm. but um, we're working on trying to get our group of donors together. There's been a couple of big changes that were positive, so that before so we hope to have maybe in a couple of years, maybe probably about two and a half million dollars worth of unopened use prescription mm -hmm. drugs going to free clinics. So the next focus there. Actually, it's, it's actually one, but it's really 1A, 1B. Um, 
call it the M3R program. M3R stands for More Minorities in Medical Research. And it kind of came about over something that's been historic. Um, during the pandemic, as there was a scramble to get vaccines, or well, there was, it's been historic. Mm -hmm. And it really came to light during the pandemic. As potential vaccines are being developed without enough minorities, mm -hmm. and I'm minorities meaning black and Hispanic people, if, if, are not in these trials, it may not yeah, work man. So very on some black and Hispanic people. So it was, and actually to bring it more home, um, a lot of those uh, trials will be in dead in Chicago. It, it was, I'll always remember the meeting that sparked it. It was, do you remember the last meeting you had before the lockdown started? I do. <laughs> Yeah, it is so vivid, and uh, that meeting with one of the Fox Club members who was actually working on uh, trials for a, a, a COVID vaccine brought this problem to light. And that's when it said, you know what? We're, we can't save the world, but we can do something about this in Chicago. So, and especially with the membership of the Fox Club Alliance, it was like, we have a really good group to address this. So the whole goal is to bring up the reasons, and believe me, they are long, historic, baked in and valid as to why Hispanic and black people have shied away from participating in clinical trials. But there have been, there's been a lot of progress and it, it, it's so important to the health of black and brown people, especially when you look about health equity, um, that we need, if, if we're ever gonna do it, we just start doing something about it now. So we call it the clinical side of M3R would be to get more black and brown people in Chicago to participate in clinical trials. And there are a lot of them in Chicago. The other side is sort of a solution, but boy, it's, long. It's going to take a while. And okay, I'm going to get a little preachy, but you know, we are so, I want it and I want it now. Fix it now. And you can't do that. The long term solution is to actually get more Hispanic and black youth in the careers in healthcare. And to the point where they can be some of the people that actually lead these clinical trials. So there's the clinical side of M3R, and then there's also the youth pipeline side of M3R. So uh, hopefully there will be a big announcement on something we're working on, uh, something that a lot of us are working on, fingers crossed. Um, that would really be a great way to really get M3R out into just the, the focus of what's going on in health here. The, the, the last part, and it was actually part of the last uh, Fox Club meeting a uh, week ago. Fox Club Alliance is looking to see how we can promote and assist in terms of how Chicago before our eyes is becoming a life sciences innovation hub a global hub too. Uh, if you look at what's going on with the art, Chicago art development at the old Michael Reese site, the 78 Lincoln Yards, if, we're in the Illinois Medical District right now. Um, then there's Matter. Um, it's sort of like all of those, you know, those places have been there forever, like Matter. Matter has only been around for like six years. Yeah, but people but people treat Matter like oh, well, that's you know those. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg has has like a three four hundred uh, million dollar investment. There's the Discovery Partners uh, project, and then slightly connected to it, uh, we have our first little incubator for quantum computing. And, and so this is all coming together and not just for the sake of beauty of like, oh, isn't this great, but 
even more importantly, there are going to be thousands, thousands of jobs created for people in Chicago. And guess what? They don't all require four-year degrees. You're talking about a career, a true career that you can start that will require an associate degree and a certification or three or four certifications or their jobs where you can work your way up. And so um, we kind of have the right team to, uh, you know, we aren't going to actually like, you know, be involved in the research, but we're, we can promote. And with the promotional tools, capabilities of a lot of the Fox Club members um, and using things like social media and this show, mm -hmm. which is a really important reason why we wanted, why I, but we really wanted to have this visual communications vehicle at our disposal to talk about things like the innovation, promotion, and then all the other things that we're uh, working on. Um, so we're kind of at the point now where uh, you've heard about nurses and humanities, you've heard about healthcare council of Chicago, you've heard about Hectone, you've heard about uh, the teams I personally love uh, that are in <laughs> Chicago and don't love. And I second that. Yeah, and you, you've heard about Fox Club. Um, but like I said, this is supposed to be the launch, but we've actually already done some programs. So I think and you, maybe you had a flavor for it if we just kind of talk, talk about yes. some yeah. of the programs we've already shot and some of the things that are in the hopper. So, so let's go first. Yeah, and I just want to reflect on what Levi just shared, a lot of information and a lot of different partners and names and um, you know, it just kind of speaks to the fact that we are a complex city with many mm -hmm. different efforts happening. Um, there are a lot of opportunities and challenges, and our goal through this show is to be able to highlight where there's opportunities for advocacy, where there's opportunities to build networks, build j job creation, economic development, all those things that we believe and our core yes. um, our core to being um, a healthier Chicago. So Takora is a nurse and that is not my skill set. <laughs> and uh, Levi is a policy expert and that is I've also been, not my expertise. I've been, I've been However, uh, uh, co collectively, you know, we have these conversations to showcase what people are doing, to bring people that are doing thoughtful work to all of our communities in Chicago uh, through this show. Um, so far, uh, Levi has done an interview with uh, leadership from Westside United, which he mentioned as one of the wonderful organizations, even very close to where we are at Can TV headquarters. Um, I also had the pleasure during March, uh, during Women's Health, uh, Women's History Month, to do some women's health topics, interviewing ICANN, the Illinois Contrac Contraceptive Contraceptive Access Now and Planned Parenthood of Illinois, which are two organizations doing both provider work and, and clinical operations and, and access of, of women's health uh, and reproductive health issues and also advocacy for those things at the city and state level. So we're going to try to unpack um, what's going on, make sense of where there are barriers and gaps in healthcare, and think about uh, the beautiful work that's happening. And Decora, you have yes. some programs even just through through the show and through the work of nurses in the humanities that you have working yes yeah, so upcoming at the studio can tv studio with community pulse i will be interviewing christopher watts who is the founder of the kindness campaign he's doing great work across the city of chicago with addressing food insecurities as well as securing jobs and promoting using social media as a platform and just boots to the ground. So I'm looking forward to interviewing Christopher. We also have a couple interviews coming up during Nurses Week for um, world-renowned nurses. We have Carolyn Smeltzer, who is a nurse author. I'm excited about her. She has a couple books that we're gonna highlight. Also, Mary Ann McDermott, who actually sits on the board of Hectone, who is a nurse who's a background, um, worked at Loyola for many, many years. She's a nurse educator. Um, as you can tell, nursing is my passion, and we have a Nurses Week coming up. Uh, if you have a chance, come out to the International Museum of Surgical Science even before May, because it is such a wonderful, wonderful place. I don't know if you guys have ever been, but please... Mm -hmm. 
please come and definitely come to our opening night on May 3rd. We have an art exhibit for Nurses Week. It's actually going to be Nurses Month we're going to celebrate because we really, really want to highlight nurses. Um, so we're going to have an art exhibit. It's entitled Remembrance and Renewal of Hope. We're going to remember some of the nurses of our past and some who have passed away. Um, and then we're going to honor a lot of the great work that nurse leaders are doing across the city of Chicago. So definitely come out to that. And when you look on the website for the International Museum of Surgical Science, we also have events planned throughout the year. It's going to be complimentary admission for all nurses. That sounds amazing. And I have not been, but I have heard yes. uh, its reputation proceeds. And so often I think we forget about how many wonderful museums. And I just love this intersectionality. And it speaks to the whole convening of our group that, you know, healthcare is not just. Uh, you know, medicine and and exactly. and shop talk. It's also about connecting our humanity to it and thinking about how art and culture influence all of mm -hmm. all aspects of our health and the way that we view it. And I also have to give a kudos and a shout out to our nurses. I know that we have had uh, a little thing called a pandemic the last couple of years. So let's honor them as all the yes, activities she mentioned. Um, and I think it's a very exciting time to celebrate them. Thank you. I certainly agree. Um, you know, as I mentioned, nursing is my passion. I um, currently work at Northwestern Medicine, um, and I've been there 25 years. Ooh, so excited to say that. Um, I'm the program manager of the Certified Nurse Assistant Program. Um, so I'm happy to also bring Hectone and everything that we learned from the Community Post back home to healthcare. Wonderful. And like I said, we have lots of things that we're doing and actually we're going to be hosting an event here at the Illinois Medical District next month on May 9th. Um, you can go to hc3.health to check out our community events. Um, we'll be talking about housing and the accessibility of the housing um, through healthcare and what that means. Um, and then also, like I said, we've hosted a couple of other CAN TV programs already, which you can watch on Channel 21 or on their YouTube under their nonprofit services page. Um, we also plan to do some great topics this summer around health equity. Uh, around um, Pride Month. Uh, what else do we got, July? Uh, your um... well, um, I was thinking here is kind of like what we what we tried to do when we were we're gonna do the lay out the programming. We are trying to be timely mm -hmm. and topical. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, um, after this show in about another hour. I want to actually do another Zoom show. Then the focus is going to be on pharmaceuticals because uh, this show is being aired. It's April 20th, mm -hmm. but April 15th was National uh, Prescription Drug Take Back mm -hmm. Day. So we're going to talk about what that is, why it's important. And then we're also going to talk about how, well, especially with everything dealing with prescription drugs, affordability, even issues that might seem or whatever, but there right now, there are a lot of people that have access to prescription drugs that when they go through Medicaid redetermination, which is right around the corner, will not be eligible. So do you just let, the, let them get sick? Well, and part of our discussion is gonna be like, okay, what are some of the things that this will be in um, Illinois Drug Reuse Opportunity Program aspect like here's what eyedrop is doing this is what other pharma uh, what other pharmacists are doing uh we may even touch on even though they don't want to talk about this but we may even touch <laughs> on uh this kind of ongoing battle right now between the uh federal justice system and the fda and how physicians and may not even thought about it. that was a like, pharmacist you, you probably caught in the middle on this mm -hmm. um you know Depending on what state you're in, can I give this drug? Can I mail it to, from, or can I receive it in the mail? Mm -hmm. um, and all the only thing they want to do is just take care of the patients. Uh, so, you know, we try to be timely. We uh, are attached. Well, nurse, the nurses and the humanities, but they they own nurses. Yes, month. please. <laughs> um, uh, there is also, I believe there's an arts month that we're looking at that the nurses and mm -hmm. the will own. Yes. Um, 
public policy is really more in my bag. So uh, in June, uh, we're going to have at least one legislative update on what happened in the uh, in the uh, current budget session in Springfield, which is slated to end May 26. Um, August is National Free and Charitable Clinic Month, and one of the Fox Glove members, and I'm on their board, is the Illinois Association of Free and Charitable Clinics. So it was sort of like we were at the show. I said, okay, I've got one of the shows in, in August already done. Um, and I know, Megan, you were doing, well, I know you were looking at doing something for back to school. Yeah, there's a lot of ideas that we have um, on, on the radar for, you know, how do we get vaccinated? What are the other types of challenges for kids with behavioral health? Um, there's lots of topics that we hope to cover on our show, and I think we're, we're running out of time. Um, so, you know, I think it's just a pleasure to partner with both of these co-creators of this show um, for uh, Community Pulse, but it's also just we are doing this work every day, thinking about it with our community partners and friends and, and corporate partners um, as we try to advance healthcare in Chicago. So stay tuned for more Community Pulse on Channel 21, uh, CAN TV's nonprofit network. Thank you to the nonprofit services for supporting today's program. Uh, you can also check us out at cantv.org uh, and through the app. They are advancing technologies and I'm sure there will be another way to stream us and find us. Um, so stay tuned for all of that, but we are just grateful to be able to share and um, hopefully connect with some of you in our community. So thank you very much. And- Well, hold it. There's one thing you didn't mention. I realize this. Aren't you the member of a board of an organization? Oh, and aren't you also a member of a board of an organization? I'm, 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 I'm an emeritus chairman, so. So, um, full disclosure uh, on this episode and as we move forward, uh, Levi and I are both proud members of the board of Can TV. Levi is an emeritus uh, president of the Can TV board. Um, and I am a newly inaugurated member of the board, so I'm proud to be also uh, a TV host now here at Can TV, and it's been such a pleasure to um, be part of the community in in more than just um, uh, a back end person helping to guide our leadership. So, with that, um, I think that's a wrap, and that we'll it. you know that was a little test. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, she had uh, and other other organizations <laughs> as well, but I'm especially proud to kind of marry my passion for healthcare and our, our community through Can TV. Um, so that's Community Pulse. We'll see you next time, friends. Yeah.